What it be y'all, this is Resident 47, here for my first brand new video on my own channel. You know, For the Record Podcast, my old show, just ended that on Wednesday. Happy to be doing stuff on my own now, on my own time, I can focus on stuff I have going on in real life. Giving y'all the same style of content, and a higher quality over here. And I'm gonna kick it off with doing a redo on my very first album review. And that's gonna be on an album that turns 32 the day this goes up, which is... Babes and Toyland's debut album, Spanking Machine, April 16th, 1990. If you watch For the Record, if you watch the videos I re-uploaded from the channel, you should know who this band is, but if not, I can break it down. So, Babes and Toyland were a punk rock band from Minneapolis, Minnesota. They were active from 1997 to 2001, and then again from 2014 to 2017. The band members were Cat Bion, the guitarist, vocalist, Lori Barbero, the drummer, and Michelle Leon, the bassist from 1987 to 1992. And then the other main bassist was Maureen Herman from 1982 to 1996. And then they had like a handful of other bassists from between that. So those are the main two. The band formed when Lori met Kat at a friend's barbecue where Kat said she was scouting for uh, people to form a band. Lori said she was down, started jamming together, hit it off, and eventually Lori met Michelle at the bar or club. She was working at that time, and that's how Babes and Toyland was formed. Started playing shows from 87 to 89, and then sometime in 89, they flew out to Reciprocal Recording in Seattle and started recording this album. They knocked it out in five days with Jack Andino, the same producer, and at the same studio that's responsible for Nirvana's Bleach. And it's in the same time frame, so the production and the spirit of the album is pretty similar. So when they got back home, after that album, they started shopping deals around Minneapolis, Landed on a label called Twin Tone, and they released this album on April 16, 1990. So, I'll go through the album packaging for y'all. Here's the album cover. One of my favorite album covers of all time. Salute Daniel Corrigan on this one. Love this arrow shot of them just laying in a bunch of dolls. And that pale blue uh, white color effect is fucking dope too. It sets the tone for the album, and it's very 1990 in a good way. This is the OG that was released when this album came out. It's only been repressed like twice on CD, once in 94, and then again in 2003 with Two Mother. So right here you got the same doll on the track list, which is Little Miss No Name, with the lyrics to one of the songs on the album. I'll reveal what that is when we get to it. And then the booklet, it's the same lyrics as the disc, you know, with the P.O. Box information. You know how albums from the 90s are. I have this on a couple other formats too, which I'll go through really quick. I also have it on cassette. Uh, there's like three different versions of this, so like three different shells. The one I have I think is a standard version, which is just your typical um, gray with clear shell. There's um, another one that's like black with clear, and there's another one that's like a, a solid baby blue slash, slash lilac color, which I want that one, that shit looks badass. But I'm happy to have this on those formats. This is like their hardest album to find. But I also have it on vinyl. This is the 2017 reissue. This is the last thing they put out before they broke up for good. It's pressed by a company called Blink Recording, which is out of Australia. And I'll be thousand. Uh, sound quality is not that good. I played it on a couple different turntables, and it like sounds really like distorted. Cat screaming is like fucks not fucks that up, but really brings down the sound quality, and that's not a diss to her. It's just how the it's just how bad the pressing was done. But we'll get down to the actual album now. So it was produced by Jack and Dino, released April 16th, 1990. And it had two singles. The first one was Dust Cake Boy, which is pretty much their demo debut single from 1989. It had Spit to See the Shine as the B-side. And then the second single was He's My Thing, which was like video only. Which was, was played on like uh, local video stations like Bohemia After Dark and shit like that. So we'll get down to the album now. Track one is Swamp Pussy. Perfect sign into the album. High octane energy as soon as you press play. Once Lori starts those drums at live shows, it's on. The whole band will just let loose and go fucking ape shit. Cat makes her presence known loud with the opening line. Why do you make me feel so bad? Why do you have to act so sad? I love how Cat turns the main riff in like these devil chord kind of notes at around 132. When she starts up the solo. I think that's what it sounds like personally. It could be something else. 
But Spawn Pussy, this is a highlight album on the album for me, one of my favorite Toyland songs of all time. And a fun fact about that title, Spawn Pussy was Cat's original idea for the band's name, but Michelle vetoed that shit because it was so, so fucking raunchy. So Lloyd chose the name Babes in Toyland, which is from a 1934 Disney movie she grew up watching. If you look up this band, um, you're gonna see a lot of like you're gonna see a lot of results for that movie as well because they're just as popular as each other. So that's Swamp Pussy. Track two is He's My Thing. Strong fucking follow up to the opener. One of the band's biggest hits. I'm not for love songs personally, but in uh, there's a, some exceptions, and in this case, it's in my top three of all time. You know, with like Method Man, All I Need, Far Side, Pass Me By. The surf rock influence is heavy on this track. Especially with the riffs and the solo, mainly. Louis' drug feel on the bridge leading up to the solo is fucking insane. That was fucking crazy. I love her technicality with those toms. This also has an amazing music video. It's a stop motion flip with the Little Miss No Name doll. That's when you know it's on the track list. Um, it's like the plot is like the doll's getting revenge on another one that cheated on her. It does it by like taking this like, saw or like this hatchet and like amputating its leg. And sets it on fire, brings it back to this other doll. It's fucking dope. You know, for a stop motion video in 1990, it took a lot of fucking time. And they killed it with, with that shit. So he's my thing. Amazing song. And amazing video. So let's go to track three now, which is Vomit Heart. Another fucking banger. A Babes Day lining up at the start of this album. I love the harmonic riff at the, be at the beginning. And in the chorus. Lori puts it down on this one. Again... The technical toms are fucking crazy. Or punishing on this track. Michelle's bass sounds really good too. You no, know, pretty dirty. You know, Kat says, My brain's a carnival of flame because you're not the same. It's all rearranged. I like the, I like the very imaginative lyrics right there. This song takes me back to summer 2018 when I really started going crazy over this band. So it's got that nostalgic factor too. And a lot of these songs have that nostalgic factor. So, we'll go to track four now, which is Never. Getting into the deeper cuts for the album now. Another great song. First thing it starts off with is Cat Shredding on those fre fucking frets. Lori laying it down with a nice drum solo. I think his was gnarly scree screech of feedback, and then the main song starts up with this grimy, dissonant riff. Everybody goes in. Cat takes no shit on this one. Take a bow before you fall. See you crawl. I see you crawl. I love that line. I like how the track ends the way it starts with Cat Shredding and Lori going off again. I love when, you know, in general, I love an artist start and end a track the same way. It's pretty smart. So that's track four, Never. We'll go to uh, the fifth track now, which is Bodo Rap. One of the most underrated songs from this album, in my opinion. It's in my top five. Lori starts it all with these crazy fast toms. Cat comes in and starts doing some more shredding. You know, and the breakdown that comes in. Boom. 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 Da -da. Uh, it's that shit will get your head banging, and if it doesn't, you stiff as a fucking statue. And this track's perfectly talented too because um, it's pronounced it's spelled rap like you know like burrito rap, but it's the W is in like parentheses, so it's like Bodo rap because Cash Delivery is like a fast paced rap flow in this song, and it's fucking amazing. You know, it's like shake this ground well of hate. This is why I rot away. And call this kettle black. This is why I ricochet at Jack Bill's house on sand. Like those three, like that rhyme scheme had no real rhyming words, but the way she pronounces them makes a rhyme. That's fucking dope. Cat was ahead of its time with like this kind of flow. It, it's not even a rap, it's a rock song, and it's fucking amazing. So yeah, for like a rock album in 1990 doing this, unheard of. So I, I, yeah, and this is another song that's nostalgic for me. Like I remember. My junior year in high school, I used to drive home bumping this album, and by the time I pulled into the house, it would be on this song. It's a bull rap, badass song, underrated. She get talked about more. It's a fucking great track. So we'll go to track six now, which is Dog. Lloyd's first track on the mic with her own. Um, I'll be a thousand with this. It's my least favorite track on the album. You know, I fucked with it more back then, but I gotta say. The opening riff is one of the dopest fucking things I ever heard. And it's very easy to play because it's all B-string if my ears are correct. You know, Lori's singing on this track is so soulful too. Uh, the, the nature of this track is like more bleak compared to what we've heard so far. 
this album in general is like pretty bleak, and it, it gets more so like that later on. You know, the lawyer has a great line here, and why every time the sun's shining, it shines so bright, so bright, but I can't find mine, I can't find mine. Being as depressed as I have been for like six years now, I felt that. I had those days where it should be good, all be good, but it's, it's just not, and the pain hits even worse. Like that, you know, like that seasonal affective disorder, that kind of shit that happens in the winter. It can happen at any time, really. So the thing about this, though, so the thing about this track that drags it down for me, it, it's it's pretty slow, and like the structure of the song is pretty linear. It doesn't throw you like really any curveballs, but it's not the it's not terrible. It's still a great song, but you know a lot of these tracks are just fucking A class bangers. And that's the end of the A side. We'll flip over to the B side now with uh, track seven, "Pain in My Heart." Another really bleak song. This is pretty much a breakup track, but it's nothing makeshift, sad, or top 40 pop about it. This is coming from a real place of pain and resentment. And like Dog, it starts out slow with Kat saying, like, whoever dumped her pretty much fucked themselves. Because they were still inside her when they had love. And, it, you know, it doesn't even have to be a relationship. Like, whenever someone you fuck with a lot drops off out of nowhere, it fucking sucks. And now at 1.15, that song becomes more fast, comes twice as fast. The drums start hitting harder. Cat starts going off on whoever this is about. You know, that chant, you know, that fry, fucking fry, fucking fry. I love that chant. It's hard as fuck. Yeah, she's really going in on whoever the fuck this is. And then, it's like towards like the end of the track, she just starts screaming like a fucking banshee. And like, the, the pain hits really hard there. You can really feel, you know, the fucking hurt in that song. Cat said in a Melody Maker interview back in 91... That a lot of the lyrics on this album are about like sour relationships or just stale shit and that happens in life, and it ain't hard to tell. So, "Pain in My Heart" is a really good song. Let's get a drink of water really quick, then we'll get to the next one. All right, let's go to track eight now. Lashes. This is my top ten Twilight songs of all time. A major highlight. Cat's poetry is at a hundred percent here, and the lyrics for this track are a real poem she wrote called "Best Sunday Dress." Which is also the name of a Pagan Baby song, which is Cat's short-lived group with Courtney Love from the mid-80s. So yeah, this track has a good amount of lore to it, and it further extends with the fact that this, uh, the lyrics for this track are the lyrics that are on the disc art, and those are the same lyrics from the booklet too. Love this song, it's very poetic, because it's literally a poem. The, the, I love the chant on the pre-chorus, the cracks of the mortar. I love, I love how she delivers it, amazing, and the chorus is very hypnotic, it's just the guitar, and it's just her and her guitar, the baby's got a ruby jewel lashes that whip her spine, every time she blinks makes me sick in two ruby jewel lashes, I love that, it's very imaginative, and once again, Lori abuses the toms of this track, and Michelle's bass really comes through here as well, I love this song, Lashes, fucking great track, you know, kind of underrated too, and this next track is, in my opinion, the most underrated song they have out there. It's a track called You're Right. Every, I mean, I'm not lying. Every song I've seen from this album has been quoted except this. It's one of the best songs they've ever done. Everybody brings their A-plus game here. Michelle starts off with one of my favorite bass lines ever. And the riff in the chorus is fucking amazing, too. Like They, they, just, they just bring their best here. Lori's drumming on the pre-chorus is also really dope. Again, those Tom technicalities. Cat has a callback to the Bodo rap track on her second verse. Suffering on the house that Jack built on a foundation of mudslides. Because on the Bodo rap, her second verse there, she says, Jack built his house on sand and mudslides. And uh, I don't know what these mentions of Jack are about. That's a lore in itself with this album. But this track is fucking out of here. It's fucking crazy. People need to stop... People need to stop fucking sleeping on this track. You no, know, it pisses me off. I don't know how it's never mentioned. Every track on this album gets love except this. It's... I don't I don't know why, man. But we'll get to a song that everybody loves with tra uh, track 10, Dust Cake Boy. A fucking Toyland classic. This whole song is just chaos. Another highlight that's no thought right there. The surf rock influence is right in your face with this track. I love that shoot ad lib Cat does um, in the beginning. That that's something she did a lot back in like this era of the band, which is fucking dope. Something I've always loved about this album, really. 
The song's like so fast paced. I love how the verses have like a back and forth between two riffs. It's real, and that with that, it's like a real fun song to play on guitar because of how fast it is and like those two different riffs, like I said. And some of Cat's best poetry is on here. Like the way she screams the lyrics is insane. It's an psychic message you can't even hear from my dumb mouth to your deaf ear. I love that. This is also their first single back in 89, which I will say I have. And it's one of my most prized possessions. There's only a thousand copies of this in existence. And there's like four different versions. The art's all the same, but the difference between them is the record is the, like the actual record label. You know, on, on mine it's uh it's blue. But there's a green one, there's a pink one, there's a yellow one. All are split like between 250 copies. And you know, blue is my favorite color. I'm happy I have that one. I got this for 20 bucks, which is crazy. And yeah, like you saw, it comes with the B-side of Split to See the Shine. Which, I'll be honest, even though it's a demo, I like it better than the Two Mother version because it's more fast-paced. I wish they kept it like that. It's fucking dope. But getting back to this track, you know, it's a fucking classic. Um, I could also see this having a video too, just them jamming the song out. At like a live show or something like that. Kind of like how Ripe was. Fucking great song. Chaotic as fuck. You know, it, it does, it's definitely a song that I love playing live, too, because it's always under set lists. That'll bring us down to the sign-off track, the track 11, Fork Down Throat. One of my favorite closing tracks ever. This is a powerful sign-off to the album. The riff is, like, similar in spirit to Pain in My Heart. Very bleak. It sets the tone of the song perfectly. Cat singing is very emotional here. You can, like, like, the Pain in My Heart, you can feel what's being said here. I love the chorus, too, you know. Gain some vision from every incision. I love how she says that. It's so catchy. The, the very last thing she says before the album ends is dope too, you know. You're a writer, you better write quick because your paper's on fire. Love that. You know, I love shit like that. Her, her fucking sense of, like, lyrics is fucking amazing. She says some really crazy shit. And she brought that line back on Spit to See the Shine too, which is also dope. So that is Babes in Toyland Spanking Machine. I had to say, this is in my top 25 albums of all time. I love it so much, I want to say it's in my top 20. It's, it's my second favorite album of theirs. My favorite will always be Fontanelle. But this shit is very dirty, very chaotic, very poignant at points. There's a lot of surf rock and punk influence here, as far as music is concerned. And Cat's lyrics are really cryptic and personal. Very poetic, and one of the songs was fully based on a real poem, you know, Lashes. And some of the album packaging is dope as well, like they say, that album cover. I fucking love it. And, like I said, with that vinyl they put on 1990, it came with two different marble um, discs, and it had a lyric booklet, which I wish I had. I, and, you know, just to save, just to save face, I wish they put the whole album lyrics in the actual CD. Because they do it with the rest of their albums. But nonetheless... Definitely my favorite album of 1990. I want, I want to get that vinyl like I was mentioning. You know, one of the best vinyl packaging I've seen. It's an amazing album. It's a masterpiece. It should be in like 1,001 albums you should hear before you die. Along with like Fontanelle. And I gotta say peace to one of my favorite bands of all time, the Melvins. The, um, the guitarist and vocalist of the band Buzz Osborne. Says Spanking Machine is one of his favorite albums of all time. And he loves touring with Babes in Toyland. So that, fucking salute with that one, because I love the Melvins and I love this band. And I will give you the rating for this album. It's a perfect 5 out of 5, a 10 out of 10. My three favorite songs going from number 3 to number 1 is Dust Cape Boy, Lashes, and then You're Right. So thank you all for watching. Happy 32nd to this masterpiece. Uh, happy I went back and redid this. I killed this in my opinion. So, I will see y'all next time. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, share, notifications, all that shit. Be doing some dope things on this channel. And until then, I am out of here. Peace.